ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, which is the fuel of the cell. Hydrolysis of ATP into phosphate and ADP drives many energy requiring processes in the cell. For example, a contraction of a muscle cell, synthesis of different molecules, or an electric impulse of a nerve cell. All these processes require a constant supply of ATP. We humans need our own body weight in ATP every day to sustain our activities. But there is a problem. We only have 50 grams of ATP in our body, and thus, we need to remake ATP time and time again in a process called ATP synthesis. Here, ADP and phosphate are fused together again to make ATP. In fact, we recycle each ATP molecule 1,300 times a day. But where does this happen? For that, we need to take a closer look at the human cell. Each human cell has to synthesize its own ATP supply. Let's have a look inside to see where that happens. The cell is divided into different compartments. Here's the nucleus, where genetic material is stored and processed. Here's the endoplasmic reticulum, where proteins, lipids and other molecules are made and transported. Here's a Golgi apparatus, the post office of the cell. And here's the mitochondrion, the powerhouse of the cell, where most of the ATP in the cell is made. There are thousands of mitochondria in each cell, forming highly dynamic networks. Let's have a closer look at the mitochondrion. It is quite a special organelle, as it charges up when food molecules are broken down inside. The mitochondrion has two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane, which form structures called cristae. The inside is called the mitochondrial matrix. Enzymes in the cytosol make a little bit of ATP by a process called glycolysis, but the vast majority of ATP is made inside the mitochondria and the crystal are the main site for the ATP synthesis. Let's have a closer look at the tip of one of those. The inner membrane of crystal contains three molecular machines that are important for the synthesis of ATP. The first one is the ATP synthase, a large molecular machine that synthesizes ATP from ADP and phosphate by a rotary mechanism. But you also need two transporters. One is called the mitochondrial ADP ATP carrier, and the other is called the phosphate carrier. Both of them belong to the same transporter family. The process of ATP synthesis starts when the spent fuel ADP coming from the rest of the cell binds to the ADP ATP carrier, which then changes conformation and transports ADP into mitochondrial matrix. Similarly, phosphate binds to the phosphate carrier, which then changes conformation and transports phosphates to the matrix. These two molecules then diffuse to a catalytic site of ATP synthase, where a rotation of the central stalk fuses them together to form ATP, which is then expunged from the site by another rotation. The newly synthesized ATP then binds to the ADP ATP carrier, causing a conformational change, leading to ATP being transported out of the mitochondrion, where it can then diffuse to the cytosol for another energy requiring reaction. This whole cycle takes about one minute. There were already structures of the cytoplasmic state of the carrier, which is open for binding of ADP coming from the cytosol, but they did not tell us how the transporter works. We present the structure of the carrier in the matrix state, which is open to the mitochondrial matrix for binding of ATP. This structure shows that the same binding site is accessible in both states, which proves that ADP and ATP bind to the same site. The structure also shows that there are gates in both states that close access to the other side. Since we have the two structures, we can now model the conformational changes that are required for their interconversion. It turns out that the mitochondrial ADP ATP carrier is the most dynamic transporter discovered to date. The conformational changes require six mobile elements, which is a unique feature. There are three gate elements shown in gray that regulate opening and closing of the cytoplasmic side of the carrier. And there are three core elements shown in primary colors that regulate opening and closing of the matrix side. In this way, the central substrate binding site is accessible from one or the other side of the inner membrane. The carriers can transport a thousand ATP molecules per second. In this way, they keep us alive every second of our lives and for all our lives. We thank you for watching.